So, you know it's possible to use the extrude tool to make cuts and remove material, but if you plan on drilling holes that are a standard size for either clearance holes or hardware, the hole feature is actually a better approach. Let's go ahead and launch the feature. The reason the hole feature is better for standard size holes is that it has many hole types already predefined for you. All you have to do is choose the correct type and size. The other benefit is that when you go to create a 2D drawing, Inventor can automatically place the correct hole annotation. There are quite a few options here in this dialog box, but hole feature is actually pretty easy to use. The placement options help you position the hole, and the rest of the options let you control the hole type and size. Under placement, there are four options from sketch, linear, concentric, and on point. We'll take a look at the from sketch and on point options a bit later. Let's take a look at concentric first. For concentric, all you have to do is select a plane on which to place the hole and a circular reference to position it. For the sake of this example, since I only have one circular edge, I'll use this plane here. For the concentric reference, I can select either an arc, a circle, or face that has a radius. This centers the hole, but since we already have a circular shaped cut out here, let's take a look at the linear placement option to put a hole on the rectangular face. Linear behaves similarly to concentric, but this time all you have to do is select the face the hole will go on and then select two references, which in this case are linear edges. For reference 1, I'll select this edge. When I do, a field pops up letting me type in the distance I want to offset the hole from the edge. I'll type in 0.18. Notice in the dialog box there is an icon next to the arrow button. This lets you flip the direction from one side of the edge to the other. For the second reference, I'll select this edge and again type in 0.18. But I could obviously specify a different value if my design called for it. Once you've located the hole, you can move on to the other options for the hole type, size, and depth. For the type, you can choose either drilled, counterbore, spot face, or countersink. As I select each option, notice how Inventor gives you different fields to control the features for each. For simplicity's sake, I'll use the drilled type. Next to the types, you can control the hole depth and diameter. When the depth does not go all the way through the part, you can choose between the two drill point options and specify the angle if necessary. Just as you saw with the extrude feature, you can specify the termination type. When I change this from distance to through all, notice the depth control goes away and the drill point options become disabled. The final options let you choose whether this will be a simple hole, a clearance hole, a tapped hole, or a taper tapped hole. When I select clearance, this expands the dialog and lets you choose what type of hardware the clearance hole is for. This is a big time saver, so you don't have to refer to the ANSI, DIN, ISO, or other standards to find out what hole size to use for your hardware. This also holds true for tapped holes. Just select the standard, size, designation, and class. As I mentioned earlier, when you create a 2D drawing of this part, Inventor can add the correct annotation for the hole for you automatically. Once everything looks good, you can press apply and the hole is added. You can see the hole feature has been added in the browser, but it leaves the hole feature dialog box on the screen in case you want to make additional hole features. If you're finished, just press done. As with other features, if you need to make changes to the hole you added, just double click on it or right click and select edit feature.